Welcome to our module on present level of performance from the supervision, monitoring, and support team. We're going to look at a couple different things, um, introductions, um, documenting present level and goal measurement in the IEP, and then we're going to talk a little bit about collecting and analyzing data. That's a subject near and dear to my heart. So this is the uh, monitoring, supervision, and support team. I am Jennifer Gleason. Um, all of us on the team were special education teachers um, before joining the Department of Education. Um, so we all do love our support part of our job more than the um, monitoring part. So anything we can do for you, feel free to reach out. Our email addresses are right here. Um, reach out for anything because we're teachers. That's what we like to do. Um, we often talk about alignment. We'll talk a tiny little bit about it today, um, but this is just a handy dandy visual support to um, help you remember alignment through the whole IEP. And we actually have a module on that as well. All right, we're going to start, as we often do, talking about the NUF case. Um, so this was a case out of Colorado, 2017-18-ish. Um, Andrew is a student. He was in a public elementary school. He has autism. And all through elementary school, his IEP pretty much stayed the same. It he just wasn't making any progress at all. So right before his fifth grade year, his parents rejected the IEP and um, enrolled him in a private school that specializes in working with students with autism. He started making progress in that school. So the parents filed due process to get reimbursement for that tuition. So the case law at that time was Rowley. And what Rowley said was any progress is progress. Merely more than de minimis, that's okay. Anything counts. So based on that, the hearing officer found in favor of the school district. The parents appealed to district court, they appealed to the circuit court, and they all agreed with the hearing officer. Merely more than de minimis, that's okay. So they appealed all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said, no, that is not okay. Every child should have the, the opportunity to meet challenging objectives. Therefore, schools must offer an IEP that is reasonably calculated to enable the child to make progress, right? So what this means is when you're writing your IEP goals, they need to be reasonably calculated such that the child can achieve those goals in one year. So then when you write your next IEP, you're showing that progress, right? They've met these goals. So I was a functional life skills teacher. So my kids were definitely working on the same skill for more than one year, right? So how do you write that in an IEP? Well, maybe um, it's, let's say, hand washing. They're washing their hands with 5% independence. I'm not going to write a goal for them to wash their hands with 80% independence. They're never going to get from 5 to 80 in a year. So I write a goal that they will wash their hands with 20% independence. So they get to that next year, maybe it's 30 or 40% independence, right? So you, that, you're working on the same goal right? Because you know it's going to take more than a year, but you're showing that progress. Hey, look, you went from 20 to 40, that kind of a thing. And you want to show that progress in the goal, not just the present level. All right, a little bit about data. Use your data. If you are taking data diligently, as we know you are, and then putting it on your shelf and taking it, looking at it when it's time to do progress reports, you're not using it. You're only using it to report progress. You're not using it to drive your programming. If the student 
isn't getting it, it's not on them, right? As teachers, we know if they're not getting it, maybe I need to change the way I'm teaching it, right? Your data will tell you that. Your data will tell you this student is not making progress. I need to change up what I'm doing. So we're going to talk about this a lot more in a little bit. But think about Andrew F. We don't know what was happening in his elementary school, but I would imagine that if his team were taking data, using that data to drive their programming, they might not have gotten into the trouble they got in. So just keep all of that in the back of your head as we go through it. So we're going to get into present level of performance. This is a must fill. So if you have a student who only has functional goals, has no academic gaps at all, that very first present level, put some kind of a statement in there that they're on grade level, commensurate with peers, something in that very first present level. And the procedural manual, which you will get a link to at the end, um, talks about this on page 24. Same is true of functional. If you have a student who has academic gaps, but no functional gaps, that very first functional present level, put some kind of statement in there. And again, page 26, procedural manual. A little bit about alignment, right? You want to make sure that each gap listed in section 4C, 4D, and 4E um, has a present level of performance, right? And we have a module on gaps as well, but we highly recommend just bulleting those gaps out. And then you'll know that you have a present level and a goal for each gap. All right, present level. The procedural manual talks about present level on page 24 and 25. We are going to go through each sentence out of order here. All right. Present level statement should be understandable to everybody, including the parents, right? You don't want to put, um, you know, our special ed speak in there. So you want it to be regular language that the parents can understand. Present level is aligned with each skill gap in sections 4C and 4D. That's what we just showed, right? Each gap gets a present level. It's aligned with the goal. So the present level and the goal are referencing the same skill, that same skill gap, right? If you have a skill gap in reading fluency, your present level and your goal should be about reading fluency, right? They all should be aligned. If you forget all of those things that I just said, the really the thing you need to remember is that present level of performance is your baseline data for that skill gap. Where are they right now, right? Your baseline data, you're using that same data point for your measurement data and that same data point for your progress monitoring, right? Your baseline data, measuring your goal, progress monitoring, all the same data point. All right, let's talk about what present level is not. It is not subjective struggles with about sometimes often you don't want to use these words in your present level because your present level is baseline data right it is not subjective and it's not approximate less than 60 about 55 percent 60 to 70 a range no ranges approximately none of these words be really confident in your data and put that specific data point in there you don't want to use grades, grade level, standard scores, percentiles, reading level um, for a variety of reasons. Grades and grade level are different in different schools. Um, they also will encompass multiple skills, right? Um, standard scores, percentiles also might encompass multiple skills, but you're not going to do those evaluations often enough to progress monitor effectively. And reading level just um, will definitely encompass multiple skills, right? We know reading, 
There are a lot of skills that go into reading at grade level. You want to um, have a goal for each of those skills and you don't want it based on reading level. It is not multiple skills or prerequisite skills. We're going to talk about prerequisite skills in a couple slides, um, but you want one present level and one goal per skill gap, right? So they each um, reference one skill. And again, present level performance is your baseline data for that skill gap. So let's look at some examples. All right, so this student has skill gaps in following a visual schedule and requesting help. We have our how statement up there. These executive function gaps affect Sammy's ability to access age-appropriate classroom activities without aggression. So we're teaching these skills in order to hopefully have the outcome of reducing instances of aggression. So what are our present level for those gaps? So for following a visual schedule, Sammy is unable to follow a visual schedule. 0%, that is absolutely fine. Um, requesting help. With adult prompting, Sammy uses a help card to request help in 50% of opportunities. He uses a help card independently in 0% of opportunities. So we have two data points here. Um, when we go forward a couple of slides to the goal, we're gonna see that the goal is to use the help card independently. So our baseline data here is 0%. The prerequisite of using a help card with adult prompting is in here. That's okay. If you want to put the prerequisite skill in here, that's absolutely fine. Make sure you also put the baseline data for that specific goal. You wouldn't want to just put with adult prompting, Sammy uses a help card to request help, and then have the goal be he will independently use the help card because we don't know if he uses it independently at all or not, right? Unless we have that present level for that specific goal. All right, here we go, right? Each gap gets a present level, gets a goal. Each goal gets a present level, gets a gap. It all needs to align around the same skill. So let's see what that looks like. So we have Sammy is unable to follow a visual schedule. We want him to follow that visual schedule with 40% independence. Um, our help, right? He uses the help card independently in 0% of opportunities. And we want him to do it with 30% independence, right? So we have that with adult prompting. We have that prerequisite skill up there, but we want to start moving toward independence. You can also see in this one, 30% um, independence over five consecutive days as measured by daily data collection and reduced instances of aggression, right? So we're, we're putting that outcome in there. It's in there, how statement in section four, and it's also here. So if you want to reference that, absolutely, that is fine. Um, just make sure you're not measuring on that. A note from recent case law, this is just from last year, 2023. Um, the court found for, that there were substantive losses to the child and the parents because the IEP had outdated data and vague language. It also had implementation failures, got that, but the court specifically noted outdated data and vague language. So that goes back to the struggles with often sometimes approximately, right? You wanna make sure that your data is clear. All right, what kind of data? We've been through a little bit of this already, but um, you can use skill-specific measurements or assessments, qualitative data through observation, checklist, daily log, running record, work samples. You can use a rubric. Um, if you reference a rubric, you must attach it to the IEP and you must also make sure that it refers to a really specific skill gap. Um, rubrics can be really vague. They can have multiple skills. So really make sure that 
it's clear what the measurement is and what the skill is. Again, we are not using eligibility evaluation data, state and local assessments, grades, report cards, or specific curriculum. All right, we get this question a lot. So what if this student is new to me and I don't have any baseline data for this goal? You can do a quick probe. That's your baseline. Right now, at this moment, this is where this student is with this skill, right? Think about Andrew F, right? You must reasonably calculate those goals to make sure that the child can achieve them in a year. How are you gonna do that if you don't know where they are right now? So think about that. A quick probe is absolutely fine. Right at this moment, they are here. This is my baseline data. And that will help you get to where they're going. All right. So that is all I have for present level. We're gonna move on to um, collecting and analyzing data, which we'll talk a lot about this baseline data here. Um, so if you have any questions, absolutely reach out to any of us and we are happy to work through this with you. So data sheets. If you are making data sheets and your staff, your ed techs are taking the data, they're using those data sheets, make sure they understand them, right? Because if if it if the data sheet doesn't make sense to the per person who's collecting the data, they're not going to use it or they might not put the data that you want on there, right? So make sure when you're creating data sheets, you're kind of talking about it with the person who's going to use it or the people who are going to use it and really make sure that they understand it. It can be super simple. These are just some examples of different types of data sheets. Um, I have an example of this one, single digit addition. You're just scoring a plus or minus anytime they do an addition problem, right? And then at the end of the day, they got nine out of 15 correct, that's 60%. Um, functional, we have requesting a break. Right, we're going to do a plus if the student independently requests a break, P if they request a break with adult prompting, minus if they exhibit the target behavior instead of requesting the break, right? Because typically you're requesting a break. They are requesting a break, but they're doing it by running away or biting you or something, right? Um, so here we have a really simple one at the top and a more complex one at the bottom, but it gives you a lot more information. Right, the one at the bottom will give you, you'll be able to see patterns, right? What times of day, during what activities are happening when the student is exhibiting these behaviors and needs a break? And what are those behaviors, right? Maybe we're keeping track of what, what behaviors. You wanna make sure you include operational definitions of those behaviors um, so that your staff knows exactly what to look for. All right, so how are we gonna use this data? What are we gonna do with it? I have a couple examples of that too. So this is just, this is like perfection, right? Look at that trend line there. Independence is going up, behavior is going down. Everything's beautiful. I'm sure everybody's data sheets always look like this, right? So here we're keeping track of percent independence requesting a break, as well as each of these behaviors instances throughout the day. All right, so really none of our data looks like this. It never does. So what if we have this kind of thing where it's all over the place, right? What do we do? Student is not making progress in requesting a break or instances of behavior. There's just nothing happening here. It's all over the place. Um, here is just a few options, things you can do, one or more of these. I'm sure there are other things you can think of as well. Um, you can form a hypothesis based on knowledge of the child and past observations. You could do some observations. Spend some time one-on-one -on -one with the student collecting data. You can do an inter-rater reliability check and training. So that's when two people take the same data at the same time and then you talk it over. Um, to make sure 
that everybody's on the same page. You might have to do some training around data collection. Um, prompting is a big deal um, for training because sometimes people prompt when they don't know they're prompting. Um, if you look at this and decide you're going to change something about the programming, keep track of when you did that, right? So here we imp implemented change in prompting protocol, right? So we're keeping track of when we did that and the data before and after, right? So here we implemented this change and then independence started going up and behavior started going down. Yay. Um, obviously, there are times when you have to change things up more than once, um, but you want to know which thing is the thing that worked, right? You don't want to change two things at once because you wouldn't know which is the thing that worked. So um, keep track of that. How long do I take data before I know that the student is or isn't making progress? Hmm. We get this question a lot too, and it's a good one. The answer is a little vague here. Um, it really depends. It depends on your knowledge of the student, right? How fast do they typically get new skills? Depends on the skill, right? Some skills are a little harder for some kids to get or the task. Um, so it really, as you gain experience with the student, you'll kind of, get that. You'll kind of know um, what you have to look at for your data to know if they're making progress or not. And get the team together. If you have related service providers that have been working with this student uh, for a few years and they're new to you, access them, right? Ask them about this kind of stuff. Get your team together. Use your team. Quick recap the data sheet must make sense to the person collecting the data. Obviously, it also has to make sense to the person analyzing the data. Um, look at your data often, because it really will tell you when the student is not making progress. Um, you may have to find change several things before you find the right one. Do one at a time and keep track. And remember, your data analysis drives your programming. If you want to get deeper into this, we do have data collection modules under our um, the office hour archive section of the professional learning page. So go there. All right, get ready. We have a little quiz for you here. Okay, we're gonna we're I say we we're gonna show you um, some present levels and goals. So think about. What is not compliant about this? So we have gaps in vowel sounds and decoding. We have a present level. Stanley struggles with identifying vowel sounds. The goal is Stanley will identify five short vowel sounds with 100% accuracy. Stanley reads 35 words correct per minute using a first grade text. And the goal is he will decode regular words up to five letters with 60% accuracy. So there are three things here. What do we got? All right, you ready? Here we go. That first present level, subjective language, right? Stanley struggles with identifying vowel sounds. And there's no baseline data there, right? Remember, our present level of performance is your baseline data. It's all you need there. And in the second one, the present level and goal don't align, right? The gap is decoding. The goal is decoding. The present level is fluency. So they don't align. So what might we do to fix this? Stanley can identify five long vowel sounds and zero short vowel sounds. The goal is we want Stanley to identify five short vowel sounds. Um, Stanley decodes regular words with 14% accuracy. We want him to decode regular words up to five letters with 60% accuracy. So that's a big jump for Stanley. We think he can do it though. All right, Helen. Helen will request a break with adult prompting in approximately 10 to 15% of opportunities. And the goal is 
Helen will independently request a break in 30% of opportunities. So we have three things with this one as well. All right, I'm gonna go, ready? Approximately, right? We don't want that approximately in there. We don't want the range, 10 to 15%. And there's no baseline data aligned with that goal. That's the prerequisite because it says, we'll request a break with adult prompting. And the goal is independently request a break. So we don't know if Helen can independently request a break at all or not, right? So we need that in there as well. So our present level, Helen does not independently request breaks and we want her to independently request a break in 30% of opportunities. So there you go. Hopefully you did well on that quiz. And that is it. We have some resources for you. This is the procedural manual we referenced. It's a really great tool for all things um, special education required forms. Of course, our main regulations. IEP quick reference, we make this for, whoop, sorry. We make this, can I go backwards? There we go. We make this for um, districts that are currently in cohort for audit. Um, for monitoring, but it is also a really great tool because it tells you everything that we look at when we come on site and what makes that compliant. Um, this is updated every year. It's not changed a lot, but there are little tweaks based on what we see out in the field. So um, if you every September want to go onto our website and grab the new one, and look it over. We also do our first office hours in September. Um, we talk about what has changed for that year. This is our professional development calendar, links to recordings and PowerPoints, which is probably how you got here. Um, all kinds of resources, the laws and regulations, and um, special education forms all on our website. This is our professional development calendar. These are the ones that have already gone by and the blue are links to those recordings. Um, the rest of those recordings should be up this week. And then going forward, this is what we have going on. Um, and these are the registration links for those. There are a couple um, that are uniquely geared toward gen ed teachers. If you want to share these links, these registration links with the gen ed teachers who teach your children. Um, we did one in October on discipline and we are doing um, an overview of special ed law for gen ed teachers in April. Um, so if you wanna share that with your gen ed teachers, that would be awesome. We would greatly appreciate that. Um, two that are um, kind of good for related service providers, which we, all of them, we like to have related service providers at all of our trainings, but these are um, uniquely relevant to related service providers. We have one next week on writing measurable functional goals. And in May, we have one on consultation and related service goals. Please give us your feedback. We really appreciate it and we really use it. We have changed our professional development based on feedback. If there are um, topics you would like us to do, put it in there and you will also get a contact hour for watching this when you do that. Um, this is everywhere that the main Department of Education is online. And again, our contact information at the monitoring and support team. And really feel free to reach out with any questions at all. We are here to support you.